screw this, I'm going back to my custom PC. Alrighty guys, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I used to have a custom built PC. We built it in my last house when my channel was just kind of in its inception phase. It was called Trooper 7, awesome PC, absolutely love it, but it went to a good home. I actually sold it to my buddy, he's a streamer, Refined Legends, check him out. He's running that 2060 Super to the bone right now. And that was an awesome PC. But then I got into the, a little taste, if you will, into the world, the cesspool of pre-built PCs with an Alienware Aurora R11. And I've gotta say, thus far, I do absolutely love this PC. I, I still love you. I do have two videos linked in the description below, five things I love about it, five things I hate about it, and I have a ton of other R11 content on this channel. So if you are a, a owner of an R10 R11 or prospector, uh, prospector, <laughs> prospective buyer of the R12, which is coming out here soon with the drop of the new 11th gen Tiger Lake Intel CPUs, then check out that playlist, the R11. There's a ton of good content and tutorials in there. But first off, we're gonna talk about price. Now, this is pretty obvious. You are gonna get the lowest price by buying components individually and building your own PC. You're paying not only recommended MSRP for all these parts, but oftentimes, since you're buying them component by component, you can shop around for the best deal on each part from Best Buy, Newegg, uh, Amazon, uh, micro center if you live in a geographic area that has one of those. However, there is a caveat to this. Right now, PC parts are very, very expensive for a couple of reasons. One, there's a huge silicone shortage from automotive makers trying to build their infotainment systems in cars, not to mention when the COVID broke out, a lot of these PC manufacturing plants such as Dell, HP, etc., they actually underquoted because they thought that sales would go down. They didn't realize people would be stuck at home or working from home and they need better PCs to do their homework. And then also people are, wanna play games and stream and stuff. People are getting into streaming and Zoom chatting with their families and stuff and they need better hardware. So demand went up and they underquoted how much silicone they would need. Not to mention, since there's high supply and low demand, other way, high demand, low supply, that brings in a scalper problem, just like we're seeing with the new gen consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox series. There's a, um, I, I'm waving over the horizon, over to the living room where I have those two bad boys in there. They're very, very hard to get a hold of because scalpers run bots and scripts and scoop them up immediately. But with PC parts, uh, specifically graphics cards, we have an additional layer of BS we have to deal with called miners. Now, yes, I do crypto mine with my gaming PC while I'm not utilizing it to 4K video edit, stream, game, or any of my general productivity. But I'm not a dedicated miner. I just happen to mine with my gaming PC. I'd like it to pay for itself eventually. So I don't categorize myself as a crypto miner. Granted, I do have a cryptocurrency playlist here where I go over a lot of tutorials helping you use your gaming PC to crypto mine with. Full-time miners that basically have rigs, open chassis racks with a bunch of GPUs in them, a bunch of 3080s and 3090s that you'll never get your hands on, sometimes multiple racks, which is called a farm, solar panels on the roof. These guys go all out. They have no life. <laughs> <laughs> but what they do have is a fat savings account probably. <laughs> so because computer parts are so hard to get right now, so expensive, you're gonna have to pay scalper prices getting these cards from eBay for like $1,500, $3,000, whatever you can find them for. Pre-builds are actually becoming better bang for the buck than buying individual components because you're paying near recommended MSRP uh, cost plus a build fee like NZXT charges $100 on, chop, on top of the price of the components in your PC. And that's basically for them to assemble, you know, all the labor. And then they also do cable management inside your case. It's pretty cool. Now Dell slash Alienware is pretty pricey for what they are. However, they run sales constantly. They do these little advertised drops where basically you can get a pretty good rig, like a 3080 in it and like a i7 or i9 water cooled for relatively inexpensive in comparison to what it would cost to build one anyway. And that brings me to the next point, which is the bond you get when you build your PC. Much like the guy that works on his car, motorcycle, house, when you build this thing, you know every component in there. So when it's time to upgrade or change out a faulty component, it's like that for you, it's second nature. Not to mention you have pride in your machine because you built it and you watched it turn from boxes on the floor into a PC, uh, a tower sitting next to you on a desk. It does really, it gives you a little tickle in the nether regions, boys. However, I still get that with the pre-built, so. Which brings me right into the final factor here, and that is performance. I hear people say this all the time, and a lot of the people making these comments, you can kind of tell are the people that don't know much about PCs, and that's fine, but I will educate you a little bit. That sounded super cocky and arrogant. 
I will educate you. Yeah, anyway, so the performance comes down to two things. The components inside the PC, which we've already covered, you can get like the high-end in flagship, top-of-the-line Intel and AMD CPUs, and the GPUs, the 30 series or the AMD 6800 XTs and stuff, right now from pre-built companies, as where you're probably going to have to wait for a while to get them in a built PC, or just pay astronomical prices, or use yourself a script or a bot. Just kidding, don't, don't do that, you're adding to the problem. So it comes down to the components and then the cooling inside of the case, which in a lot of pre-builds isn't that great. For example, the Alienware. I have an entire playlist going over how to increase the cooling as the out of the box cooling on the R10, 11, and 12 is not great. And cooling is important because that is gonna allow the components inside your PC, your GPU and CPU and RAM to not throttle back performance, basically, trying to keep itself from overheating, it's limiting performance. Think of it like a rev limiter on a race car. So as with a built PC, you can install as many fans as you want. You probably have a larger case, like a mid tower or even a full size. I do this because full sizes are ridiculously huge. I think if you're building a PC, a mid tower is just fine. Unless you want to show how big your schmeckle is at the bar. Like, yeah, I got a full tower case. I got 17 hard drives in her. I got 128 gigs of RAM. I got two GPUs slamming each other in an SCLI slot. Like, Jesus, chill, bro. Yeah, so it comes down to the components, which are right now easier to get in a pre-built, and then it comes down to cooling, which is a lot better generally on a, a built, custom-built PC, because a pre-built, there are mods, custom upgrades you can do, like we're doing on this channel here, to catch up with the lack of stock performance of cooling. Um, the lack of stock cooling. So performance is an absolute draw because as long as you can cool properly to where you're not throttling and you can get into the realm of overclocking, which now I can comfortably overclock the nipples off of the RAM, the CPU and the GPU. For example, the RAM and CPU are overclocked right now. The GPU is a 3080 in there. I run it at stock clock and it's an absolute monster. The 10th gen i7 in there is overclocked to five gigahertz right now. Never peaks on the temp, never throttles back. And then my RAM is about, I'm trying to think what my clock is on it right now. It's about three to 350 megahertz faster than it's advertised uh, speed. So performance, absolute draw. As long as you can overclock or even run stock clocks without throttling, you're good. So I think that's gonna do it. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much, but this is my experience as somebody that built a custom PC and somebody that now has a pre-built. They're both fantastic. But right now it just makes sense to get a pre-built. I would not judge people that usually praise the custom built world getting a pre-built because it is the easiest way to get these components right now. If you like the video, shoving a thumb where the sun don't shine, kind of tickle in the YouTube prostate by liking the video, helps it to get seen by more people so this information can reach and assist them as well, which helps me grow my little channel too, which keeps me motivated to make videos like this. Subscribe for more content just like this. I do a lot of tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as news in the gaming community and industry, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes in the next video. Peace.